interesting title for our last tall tale. Martin Brosman is going to tell us about shoplifters and crazy people. Let's bring Martin up here. Thank you. I actually worked at Radio Shack in the 80s, and I worked at Tower Radio Shack in Raleigh that was the number one shoplifted store in the whole area. And what I learned about shoplifting is that it was basically arresting that person and having them go downtown was entertaining to them and would shoot my whole day. So I figured out that I had to be more creative with the shoplifters and get them to leave my store. Well, I learned a number of things with that that I also learned working in a radio shack in Washington where I mastered the art of dealing with crazy people because on K Street in Washington, a lot of them showed up. So I want to talk to you today a little bit about the skills I developed and some of the stories. Because see, with the shoplifter, if you arrest them and get them to go downtown, that is just entertaining to them and it shoots your whole day. So you've got to figure out a way to get this person who came into your store to leave quickly and, and not be offended. So several things I would do is I'd invade their personal space and suggest things to them. I remember one shoplifter was, came in for batteries and of course I sold them several of the stuffed animals which I put in his hand and I said, you know, with those stuffed animals, you need some more. And I put some more in his hand. And by the time he was holding about five stuffed animals, he goes, I really need to be going. I don't think I need batteries anymore. <laughs> Another technique I'd use is I'd see them coming in because there was a Sears surplus store across the way. And most people don't shop at the Sears surplus store in the summer with heat in a trench coat. <laughs> okay? But they go there, then they stop at the car and load whatever they got there, and then they come to my radio shack. So one of my techniques with this would be, I would basically, this guy comes in, and what I would do is I'd go, they come in the door and I'd greet them and say, hey, how are you doing? I'm the manager, I'm going to be working it back. What does that say to a shoplifter? Open season, right? So then I'd do things like, I'd watch where they go, and I'd have an answer for different places they went. And my favorite place for them to go was the car stereo system. Because at Radio Shack in the 80s, the car stereos were mounted in a, a large device with particle board, and they were mounted on rails. And to get out a car stereo, you had to commit your hands in among the particle board, unscrew the bolts, and then steal the car stereo. So at the moment, they would fully commit their arms in there and be unscrewing the bolts. From the back of the room, I'd go, by the way, while you're looking at the car stereos, be careful. I had shoplifters, so I wired it to 220 volts in the back, which will kill the next sucker that does it. At that moment, you'd hear a scraping noise. Now, I'd probably go to jail today for this because they were holding their arms and noticing there was some skin missing as they jacked it out of the car stereo. The other thing I learned about is dealing with crazy people. And, and the, the bottom line on this one was, you know, when crazy people come and tell you a story, it's important that what you do is you appease them. So I had a gentleman come in once, and I had a shoplifter in back, and he said to me, he said, I said, sir, I'm sorry, but I have a shoplifter I'm watching in back. And he said, want me to get my gun? And I thought, great, I got a nutcase in front and a crazy person in back. I'll tell the story shortly. Then after that, I found out, once the shoplifter left, I found out basically a little bit more about him. So the, I go over to the shoplifter, I appease him, I get him out the door, and then my crazy person's there. And my crazy person's standing there, and I said to him, sir, thank you for your generosity. How can I help you now? Because that's what you do with crazy people. If they say there's a giant alligator coming at you, you go, thank you for the tip. I appreciate <laughs> it. So anyway, he said to me, he said, son, you don't know who I am, do you? 
And I said, sir, I work 90 hours a week at this radio shack, and I'm really busy. I miss all types of celebrities. I'm going, please don't let me die tonight in this radio shack. Oh, Lord, please don't let me die. So they said, son, I am, and he gave me a title that ended with the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. I had one of the greatest crazies in my store, and I thought, I'm young and excited. This is a nutcase you seldom get. It's like Charles Manson showing up, you know? And I thought, what do I want to ask this guy? And the only thing I thought is, who is your favorite politician? And he looked at me and he said, well, Mr. Helms, but he's a bit of a liberal. And that's the end of my story. Thank you very much.